pew 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 I'm just gonna start doing my own one if I can't figure out yours. Yeah. And fast enough. Well, that one, I mean, it, it, it was very hard to do. She said. And also, it was, I mean, it was very obscure and I didn't do it well. It was Werewolves of London, Frank Zappa. Zappa, I believe, song. is the correct pronunciation. Of that. What's up, guys? What's up? Happy Gravy Day. Happy Gravy Day. And uh, it's a very spooky Gravy Day this time. Not the spookiest, because we do have our spooktacular coming up December 20th at Southern Star Brewing Company. The fine folks at Southern Star are going to be taking care of us on that one. And uh, it is we're going to have our Gravies Awards. It'll be our Christmas spooktacular. Looking forward to it. But uh, we got a bunch of episodes up until then, and I think this is going to be a great one. It's a Halloween edition. Yeah. I mean, we're not recording on Halloween. It feels good. But we are recording. We got, let's just say we got Halloween on the brain. This is as close you know? to Halloween as we could get. Without being on Halloween. But let's get into where you've been. We'll tell you guys what we've been up to since we last spoke with you guys. Where you been? 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 Do uh, you want to go first, bud? Yeah, sure. I uh, I uh, once again went up to Fredericksburg this weekend, but this time it was to move my brother up there. He's, okay, uh, officially gone. But he couldn't. I, he couldn't just walk up there. No, no. He you had uh, to physically. Well, move him. I had to go with him because uh, my uh, my Family. grandparents were giving uh, their car to my sister, so I had uh, to go there to drive the car back. Okay. Uh, but yeah, that was nice I mean, of you. Yeah, I mean, a nice was, thing to do. It, it, it's been really nice, and especially the car ride back was nice because then I didn't have to sit there with the windows down the whole time uh-huh, because uh-huh. you know he's gonna smoke a cigarette, and then like thirty minutes later he's gonna smoke another cigarette, and then like fifteen minutes later he's gonna smoke another cigarette. So like I can just not have the really loud wind destroying my hearing. Yeah, that's already shit. That's true. That's a, uh, that's a plus. And also, it's just been uh, and you know I'm gonna shit talk my brother basically during this the whole. Part. He doesn't listen, does he? But no. So yeah, then you're good. But uh, but it's just the silence is nice. Yeah. God, he just he fills every waking second of every day with words. There's nothing wrong with that. I feel like I oh, do that. No, literally, my dad was texting me like I left Sunday morning. All Sunday, he was just texting me like, "Your brother won't shut the fuck up," and I was like, "Dude, he's your problem now." Yeah, I don't deal like, with him anymore. Like that's on you. Kick him out of your house. That's why I jokingly said to my dad before I left, I was like, "I give it six months before you kick him out," and he goes, "I'll take the under." <laughs> And just, it's his house, so he could probably fix those lines a little bit. You yeah, know? it's just just so much time. It's kind of an unfair bet. He's to trying to watch the, the Chiefs Tech uh, Chiefs Packers games uh, last Sunday, and he just keeps texting me. He's like, "Dude, your brother will not shut the fuck up." Well, he's watching the and game. I, I, I talked like, during Giants games. I was like, "Just tell him to shut the fuck up." Yeah, good advice. Like, just tell him it's your house. Tell him shut the fuck up, or go in the other room. I mean, you'd think he would, but I guess not. No, he won't. He will He's always got something to say. Well, I mean, I you know, I feel like I I feel like your brother and I might have been cut from the same cloth though. Yeah. Cuz I feel like everyone wants to tell me to shut up half the time anyway. No, but like at least if you're ta- you'll be talking like about what's happening, he just he just fills the space with words. Oh, not even about the game? Like, oh, most of it's about the game. But uh-huh. then he'll like want to dissect every little fucking thing and go into what they were thinking behind it. I'm like, "Andrew, just watch the fu- shut the fuck Look, up." Look, they have guys that are paid to do that. Yeah. Like, okay. Oh, he'll say something, and then the announcer will say, "Oh, you said it." He's that guy, which is also like it's on a delay too, so you're not exactly getting like the live feed of what the the announcers are saying. So well, you might I mean, have he said, said it at the it, same he time. It, he said it quicker than the before the said broadcast. It, yeah, but uh, true. So yeah, uh, did that. Been enjoying a lot of the silence. Mm-hmm. So um, see it. And just uh, watching Big Mouth season three, I'm finally getting around to it. Fucking phenomenal! It's pretty great. Nick Kroll knows what he's up to. Dude, it's uh God, it's one of my favorite shows. It's so good. All right. Um. So I went to the uh, weekly D Halloween party on Friday night out at Ooh. Packard's Pub. Shout out to Andrew Packard for having us out there. Shout out to Daniel and Danny for putting on one hell. Of a party, got to see our girl Stephanie Day Bow Bow out there. She was asking about you. She dressed up like a scarecrow, looked way cooler than I did, and uh, she had she did like all the makeup and stuff. She was super committed to it, and uh, yeah, she was rocking that costume. Emma was dressed as like an '80s mom. I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> big old mom jeans. Uh, no, she just had like a big like fancy like froofy dress with like oh, shoulder pads and okay, stuff. Yeah. It was pretty cool though. 
And uh, like she doesn't have her ears pierced, so she had these like clip on earrings and stuff. It looked like they were straight up from the eighties, so it was pretty fun. Uh, Danny and Daniel were a nun and a priest, which was pretty funny. What were you? I was uh, I was running Forrest Gump, you mm. know, with with the the Bubba Gump. I hat. wish I could have seen that. Yeah, it would have been nice. It would have been nice if only there was some way. <laughs> if only there was some way that you could see the pictures of that. Um, <laughs> Uh, I also, uh, then, then sat, so that was a lot of fun sit out there, but like I had a big weekend, I had a big weekend. So it was kind of, it was tough to do like the Halloween party. So I couldn't get like too lit, even though I did get pretty, pretty drunk at that party. Um, but I went home and the next morning got up, watched West Ham, but I unfortunately was unable to go to Austin because Premier League Morning was doing a live broadcast from mm. Austin off of 6th Street. And for those of you that don't know what Premier League Morning is, which I'm sure, assuming are most of you except for the, uh, the the soccer aficionados on the on the Gravy Gang, uh, Premier League Morning is basically the EPL's equivalent of College Game Day. And so they were out here in Austin talking with in front of these fans about the the matchups, talking football about the big matchups of the day. And uh, the Bayou Ironworks went out there. And since I couldn't go, my buddy Adrian made a fathead of my face and got it on NBC. And it was pretty awesome because then um, our buddy Claret and Big Blue that listens to the podcast up in New Jersey, he tagged me and something on Twitter. like... that's like he was just like laughing emojis. It was like, what the fuck is he doing up there? And it was <laughs> funny as shit because it was like, like, like you know the NCAA, uh, the basketball college game day when they do that, where like sometimes they'll just have like Jay Billis's head in the background. I was like, I am that. That is me now. You guys did that. He that was. It's a pretty crazy feel. It was like I am he. he I feel me. like it was cooler my face being on there from somebody else than it would have been if I had gone there at all. And so shout out to the Bio Ironworks, Chris. Uh, Adrian and Lee, all you guys were uh, were holding that up there, getting me on in a bunch of shots, and then throughout the day, then I just kept get, getting tagged, and I'm like, dude, is that you? Hey, I'm pretty sure, and I was getting like emails from people that watch EPL, that listen to the buzz and stuff, like, <laughs> hey, I think that's you on TV, right? I was like, oh yeah, it's definitely me, man. It's definitely me. And then Claire, that's actually me. Yeah, and then our buddy Claire and Big Blue on uh, on Twitter, he was uh like you could just tell he recognized it because i used that same face that adrian mm-hmm. made uh, for all of our podcast cover photos and everything so <laughs> he just like popped up and was like what the fuck is this asshole doing up there but that was a pretty fun little bit and uh so i'm basically a tv star now not to brag but i was on premier league morning radio and tv we just gotta it's, get you in films I'm man all around all around uh then saturday after west ham fucking tied Went to BuzzFest out in the Woodlands. That was a lot of fun. Got to interview Atlas Genius. They were my first interview on the Buzz, and they are my most recent interview on the Buzz. And then I had my West Ham jersey on out there, and they're like, hey, mate, uh, what's, with the, what's with the West Ham? And then I talked soccer with them for like 15 minutes. So soccer brings us all together, really, guys. So who would have thought a couple years ago I wouldn't have had that bond with them, and now they're like, oh, this guy, Making this friends. guy with the soccer, all right, let's talk to this dude. You know, that was pretty cool. And uh, they're Chelsea fans, so we were very excited about Christian Pulisic scoring some goals for the U.S. Okay. of A. and Chelsea on on Saturday. Then I uh, saw <clears throat> Atlas Genius, Meg Myers. Meg Myers had this solid little, like, bodysuit she was rocking. It was a cat suit, whatever it's called. But it was awesome. Meg Myers was, good, was great looking, and Meg Myers put on a hell of a show. Live was out there. Um, Our Lady Peace. It was pretty solid. And then Godsmack closed the whole thing. Oh, Bush was also there. Jacks of no trades. That was not. I'm just making up band names. Yeah, so. that was not them. <laughs> they were not there. But it was, it was a way, lot of fun. Great band name. <laughs> Jacks of no trades. Yeah. Or, or Jack of no trade. Jack. Jack and the no trades. Jacks of no trade. <clears throat> Jack and the no trade clauses. Ooh. There we go. Let's uh, get into the Comeback Kids segment this week where we just shoehorn everything we want to back into the news, and uh, we'll talk about it. So here we go. This is uh, Comeback Kid. Later, let's. It's the Comeback Kid. The Comeback Kid of the Week. The Comeback Kid of the Week. Bitch. Yeah. All right. Our first comeback kid of the week is J.J. Watt getting injured. Ah! Yeah, this time he tore his pectoral muscle. His pectoral muscle. Pectoral. And uh, so, was it last year? 
He went last year. He had a full season. Yeah, right? last year he was able. To but the year season. before that, it was a knee injury. Then it was the it was back, a back injury. The year before that, so they're not and like I think back the year before that as well. But it's not like a recurring like same injury. It's just like severe it's injuries. Just such, it's just such a freak out of nowhere injury. Like there's nothing you can do to prepare for that. You reach out, somebody hits it, you tear your fucking pec. Is he just too strong? Maybe. I think is, that's what it is. Is he an overtrained athlete? Well, you know what it like is, Brian Cushing. Now that he's been in a serious relationship for a while, uh-huh. I think he's not jerking it as much, and that just that, mm, that, that weakens that, the pec. That, that weakens the pec, man. It's just that specific muscle. That's a little known fact. I'm glad you brought that up. So JJ I was, Watt being in love, not may, good for his football maybe career. jerk off a little bit more, fellas out there. Yeah, you dude, know, walk, for the pecs, for the pecs. And then, like, it sounds like, why do you always have to jerk off? You're like, I'm trying to strengthen my pecs, so yeah. maybe get off my case. <laughs> do you want me to turn into or, J.J. Watt? And they'll probably be like, yes, I do want you to turn into J.J. Here, Watt. He's pretty successful. get on my case. Yeah. If you know what I'm saying. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Maybe you finish the job for me, toots. <laughs> huh? No, we respect women here on the podcast. This is only a consensual. Well, if they walk in on you jacking thing. it and they're having a conversation with you, they're, you're, I mean, you're probably dating. Or you stole something of theirs. So just, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm, just thinking like all, holding, I'm thinking of all the situations out here. You're holding their stolen property in one hand and jacking in the other, and they're like, what are you doing? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Making a jack-o'-lantern, baby. Can I have that before <laughs> you come on it? That's what happens when I you jerk off back. into a pumpkin. <laughs> it's a jack-o'-lantern. Ooh. Yeah? Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so J.J. Watt is injured. He's out for the rest of the season. So this is the third season ending, ending injury he's had in the last four years. I mean, he's a Hall of Famer already. Yeah, but just he could have been up there with like Lawrence Taylor yeah, and like the greatest he was conversation, so the greatest of all time conversation. He was he was unstoppable. He was unblockable. You could not do anything about getting to, like you could double team him. He was getting through double. Remember when he was getting triple teams after the back to back MVP season? Oh yeah, and he was still getting there, and it still pisses me off now because he was getting triple teamed and somehow we had nobody else that could get to the. Made Fuck no sense. That. It was Made such no a sense. waste of his talent. But, and then, uh, yeah, the Halloween. That's a comeback, kid, because Halloween is this Thursday when you're listening. We're recording yeah. on a Wednesday. We should have done something for we it. We should have done something. We going to be anything for Halloween? No? No, I'm act- I, I'm not um, I'm not going to a Halloween party this year. No I've always, Halloween parties. I, historically, I've gone to my buddy's out. In, uh, he's got a house out in Sealy. Uh-huh. But over the past you know, year and a half, he's had uh, two friends that have lived out there with them. They've both, like, moved away. He doesn't really stay out there anymore because um, he's got another spot, too. So, like, they're not doing a big blowout this year. And I just, like, my sister's going out of town this weekend, so I'm going to be hanging out with the dogs. I'm just going to – oh, shit. Just... Oh, no, it's on Thursday. Hang out with the dog, Louie. Her dogs. Yeah, but thank God – okay. <laughs> so I, I, I just panicked for a second. I thought Halloween was on Friday. I was like, fuck, i got to get candy for kids. No, and, you don't. And you also, just canned goods. Also, it would have been really weird because our porch light doesn't work. So, like, that would have just been uh, weird. Buy a tiki torch. Ooh. Problem no, solved. but thank God it's on Thursday. Or so a light bulb. my sister can take care of all that bullshit. And I'll just play Fortnite and hope I don't scream any profanities as kids come to the door. Um, Another comeback kid we got is chicken. Did you know Popeye's has a new chicken again? Oh, my God. Popeye's has Is it chicken. started again already? It's on Sunday. They're going to start it on Sunday. That cause doesn't fucking help They're me. coming after well, they're coming after Chick Fil A, and like it's like, dude, you have such a little bitch syndrome right now, where you like you're such a like they're the little brothers. Like, hey, look at me, look at me, look at me, hey, 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 hey look at me. And like, notice Chick Fil A is like, I don't care, bro. Yeah. Like Chick Fil A said a couple things, you know, they they made some jokes back and forth, but like Chick Fil A all on doesn't give a fuck because Chick Fil A is gonna be okay no matter what. Popeyes what? is gonna be okay anyways, but it's like, dude, Popeyes like, I don't like I don't care. It's a chicken sandwich, and I hate that like. Everybody's I want to try it. it. I, I'll try it, but I'm not going to wait in line. I'm not going to like, no. you know, like, I, I, I'm i not going to buy into this hype. It's all them doing this for marketing. And when you're that person, like, oh, I got to go to a Popeye's chicken sandwich. I have to go now. Like, you're buying into the hype. Don't do that, guys. What, what took you, what's it been, four months? Popeye's What took is, you four months to get supplies back? Popeye's what? is at best. Yeah, like, like Popeyes was out of chicken, like fucking twelve oh, fucking piece of chicken, a chicken breast on a bun, bitch. Like, what? What? What do you fucking want oh, to do? We, we we can't get the buns. Oh, they stopped making bread. They stopped making bread. <laughs> yeah, they just quit making. Like, what? Go to a store. Make, what are the chances they run out of supplies again? Oh, well, they're one hundred percent. 
because they do it because they create the demand. It's like uh, Entertainment 720, remember? Oh, yeah. Where they're like, well, we said no to everybody the first two weeks to try and create a demand. It's like, that was a terrible business practice. Yeah. Because then you didn't, like, it took you that, yeah. Like, like would you have to look, it's not the McRib. It's not the McRib. Which, by the way, is, and I'm going to get hate for Don't this. Don't hate on the McRib. I, it's supreme, Don't. It's supremely overrated. I don't think it's bad. It's not like the world, the best thing in the world. I'll give you that. No, it's just it's like, the, like once a year, like when the McRib comes back, it's a nice little treat. Every two or three years, I'll try one. I thought about and, getting and, a McRib the other and, day. And, I was passing every McDonald's. Every time I get one, I'm like, my money could have been so much better spent here. Well, at McDonald's. on the way out to BuzzFest, it's I was not like, that good. like, it's not bad, but it's just like, why do people love this? It's different. Because, because, and it's a limited time. Because it goes away and then comes back and then right. goes away and comes if back. If you tell like, me anything's going away, it's like, I got to get all of it. I got to get all that I can. I don't know what else I'm going to do. I don't know. It's just like the McRib's not like, but good. but the McRib is at least different, you know. It's not like, hey, like like if you, it's a chicken place. Popeyes makes chicken. Popeyes is known for chicken, and they're like, we can't have a chicken sandwich. One like that's been around. I have like on the more the Rod Ryan show, we've had people that are like, yo, I used to eat chicken sandwiches from Popeyes for like lunch all the time. I don't know why they make it such a big deal out of it. They throw a pickle on it. They throw the bread and then it's just the it's it's the fucking same thing like who gives a I shit think maybe they changed the recipe or something on it and popeye's chicken i'm not knocking it because popeye's chicken is dope i would take kfc over popeye's to quote a great movie popeye's chicken is the shiznit it is the shiznit d shiznit yeah, yeah. um shout out big daddy or little nicky sorry yeah but uh but but yeah popeye's popeye's is like i would put like one is raising canes for me if you're going chicken raising canes now, they have, like, the sandwich, but it's really just chicken strips. It's kind of like a Whataburger chicken mm-hmm. strip sandwich, basically. So, like, the real true chicken sandwich, the GOAT is Chick-fil-A. It goes Chick-fil-A, and chick fil is not yeah, worried. You, you cannot beat Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich. You, just you really can't. That pickle brine, man. The best chicken, though, is Raising Cane's, followed by Chick-fil-A. Then I would put KFC and then Popeye's. I don't hate it if you put Popeye's over KFC. I Just personal preference, I would take Eight KFC. Eight years ago, I would have said yes now. And I haven't had KFC in a while, but they started pre-betting their chicken before they sent it out to the stores a while back, and oh, the quality really? severely dropped for me. Maybe it was just the store. See, that it's I would been go a minute to. since I had KFC as well. It's been a long time, and maybe it was just the store I was going to. The quality went very far downhill. But man, like I remember KFC being the goat of chicken that you could get growing up. Like, and like then, it, when they had the when they had the bowls, the KFC bowls, to the KFC famous bowls, which is one hundred percent like some stoner, and I've already said this oh, on yeah. the podcast a bunch of times, where it's like it was just, dude, what if we just, dude, I'll make those at work. We get the whole like meal, we just throw it in the thing, we throw potatoes on it, and you're like, yeah, man, I used we to, got a spork already, so we can eat the. Oh, this is gold. I used to make it at work if we had ex, extra fried chicken left over. Mm-hmm. I'd cut that bitch up, get a bunch of mashed potatoes, throw some corn on top, and then the white country gravy though. Was the what? It? What tree? What kind of tree? Country. Oh, it's a country. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then I'd mix up, or really it was my brother who did it. We, we'd get a big old mixing bowl like you use for brownies and just make a big old some bitch of that and just let everyone fucking grab some and take it home. Yeah, that's a pretty solid. The, the homemade famous bowl. It was fucking amazing. Fuck, I want chicken now. Um, I guess this is like a pre not cool, but like I went to BuzzFest. I was shouting. I was, I was drinking. I was doing terrible things to my voice. And my voice was kind of fucked. At least it was to your voice. That's true. Uh, uh, my, my voice was pretty fucked for, uh, for a couple of days after BuzzFest. And the only thing that I did that was helping it was I'd make some tea, and I was using these honey sticks from Bees Knees Honey Company. I'm literally and using their beard balm right he now. Is put, he is applying the beard balm right now, and it's great. It doesn't smoke so good. It smells so good. And uh, well, it's you know why because it's the uh, tobacco vanilla one. That's, that's why. why I chose that's what this it is. One. That's most you had, fantastic. Yeah, the hemp here as well on the table, but you know what? I wanted to go tobacco vanilla. But uh, yeah, I'm telling you, I've been using the uh, the honey sticks with my tea, and I like I was even just like I, I just cut open one and just drank the honey out of it, and uh, man, it's really helping. You just needed that. It, that it's morning. helping the you pipes. Needed to pick me up. It's helping the pipes, guys. And uh, BZ's Honey Company is our go-to place for honey, lip balm, beard care, cologne, and more. And yeah, Pat just opened that tobacco vanilla. So, it smells so, so good. good. You know, I brought uh, a jar of the honey up to my mom, and I brought the tobe- uh, the honey sticks. Uh huh. Loving it. My girl Tessa is loving the fuck out of her honey that we gave her from Bees Knees oh, Honey God, Company. So. This smells so good. Now yeah. I just have the aroma oh, wafting up into it's, my nose. It's pretty great. Um, but yeah, all their products are 100 percent natural, straight from their own bees, and anything that they add to it's 100 percent organic. They've got all kinds of different flavored honey. They get it straight. They get it straight from their hive, and their creamed honey is delicious. It's perfect for toast, bagels. 
even in your coffee. You want a little sweetener for your coffee, but you don't want to go get that like cream and stuff. Put a little uh, bee's knees creamed honey in there. It's pretty great. Uh, the lip balm made use, using just three ingredients, beeswax, 100% pure organic hemp balm, and organic peppermint oil extract. They sent me some. They sent me like the pump, pump, or pump, pumpkin spice one. <laughs> that pumpernickel spice. That wasn't what it was. Uh, pumpkin spice. And Have uh, you spoke I, this language that. before? Uh, not rare. Not often. <laughs> not often. But uh, I, I love the peppermint one too. And I'm telling you, like right now I've had that kind of like, you know where you almost have like the crack on your lip, on the edge of your lip right there? Mm-hmm. Like I've, I've been applying the fuck out of some bee's knees and like I can just feel it healing right away. Also go give them a follow on Instagram at bee's knees honey co and Twitter at bee's knees honey one. If you're purchasing any of their products when you get them send them a picture letting you letting you know letting them know that you support the people that support us bees knees honey one on twitter and at bees knees honey co on instagram and again our code is ptg pod for 10 percent off at bees knees honey company.com uh, uh another verbal meme it's just a uh it's a picture of a goat and it just says bees knees honey company oh oh <laughs> We'll make that. We'll make that. Boom. Um, hashtag PTG not cool at Pass Your Pod. I'm at Alex J. Middleton. Pat's at not Pat Dion. Robert is at Robert Barbosa03. Once again, just before we get into it, let me tell you guys, like we've already talked about this is the like the most must watch like podcast ver- video version you should watch, right? Yeah. So do that. Just do that because we're we're getting some great FaceTime with you guys this podcast. Um, let's get right into it. It's the Not Cool segment and uh, the Late Let's. I believe you guys got a little tune to play for us. Right, guys? Not cool, man. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool. Not cool. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool, man. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool. Not cool. Dude, that's not cool. I fucked my ankle up somehow. It also ankle injury here. I don't know. I, I I think I rolled it somehow. But, like, my left ankle is just fucking on fire all week. It just, it's sore as shit. Like, I feel like it twisted or something. I was running around at BuzzFest. I was drunk. Uh, like, combined with my, like, my voice was just gone. And, like, today's the first day. It's, like, 100% I don't know back. how you did I it. I still think it's, like, maybe but 90%. But, like, uh, yeah, it... It fucking sucks. My ankle is really in pain. I don't think I broke anything, but it's just like, or, or like really severely did anything, but it's just like, oh, like every time I step on it, it's like, ow, ow, ow. Why did you do this, Alex? And like, I can't remember what I did to cause this, but it was a drinking injury. We'll just chalk it up to that. Do you have a not cool pad? I've got is another it, one. I'll go after you. Is it worse if you, uh, if you don't remember it or you do remember the drunk injury? Because um, I remember like, a, like what was it? I, probably almost a year ago now when I'm pretty sure I broke a bone in my wrist from the uh, punching machine when I fall, you know, the, you know, the punching bags at bars. Right. right. And I fall through and hit the machine and it hurt really bad, but I was very drunk. So, and I was like, oh, well, I don't know. Let me hit one more. And as soon as I connected with the bag, I was like, oh, that was very bad. Was and a- like my wrist doesn't line, like the bones don't line up correctly anymore. Oh, yeah. So like, I'm pretty sure I broke something. But is it worse remembering or not or like knowing or not knowing? I would say like if you know it, you can at least kind of assess what it was that you did and like kind of help so figure it out. Knowing. Because I'm like, like I, I don't, it wasn't a super severe one. It was just like for it's like Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Today's yeah. Wednesday for four days. It's just been like, like pretty you just, painful. You just sprain, sprained it pretty bad. Yeah, but like I don't know what like, I wasn't on the pills or anything. I'm, I don't think I was making any sharp cuts. I'm although I probably could have been. That I broke something. In Robert, my but, like, I happened. was like I wasn't like blackout drunk. Like I told Robert. Like, do you remember? Like, was I making any sudden movements? Was I was I trying to like? Uh, there was a football game on. Was I trying to like pull off spin moves on people? I don't know. Uh, not that I saw. You seemed mm. fine when I last saw you. You seemed fine. Like I was, I was. It was late in the night where I was like fucked up, fucked up. Because like I was like I don't want to be an ass. I'm at work. I was we were like I said we were with our bosses. Mm-hmm. Like I was drunk, but I was manageable drunk. Where like I remember everything I was saying. And you were office party drunk. I was office party drunk. There you yeah, go. and uh, yeah, it just it's painful. Yeah, it's my painful. Uh, my not cool is death. Ooh, that's uh, today. As many of you uh, probably know, and I've, I I should have written down his name. Um, I think it was John Witherspoon mm-hmm. pops, pops from Friday. If you guys ever saw Friday or next Friday was ice cubes father, or if you've seen 75,000 other things since then, he's been in one of the fucking great comedic actors of the last 40 years. I would say 
Uh, he's in he, the boondocks. He died. Uh, was it this morning? I believe this morning. I think so. Very early this morning. He died this morning. Um, they announced it. Uh, they, I, if you're on Twitter, I'm sure you've seen. Everyone's been posting clips of him. He was fucking amazing. Uh, so R.I.P. Pops. He died also on Monday mor- Monday afternoon. My uh, my grandfather died. I'm sorry to hear that. Man. Uh, yeah, you know it's shitty, but I'm I'm just happy. You know, I got to I hadn't seen him in like I don't know six or seven years. Luckily, I got to go up for my cousin's wedding a couple weeks ago. I got to see him. It was almost exactly three years to the day from when my grandmother died. Uh, I think it was like two days off. He died like uh, two days before. It would have been exactly three years. Um, but he still had, he had a sense of humor to the end when I was up there and I saw him. And I go, hey, uh, how do you feel? And he goes, how do I look? <laughs> <laughs> but just just one of the funniest guys. Every every time I ever saw him, he always had a dirty limerick to tell me from the time I was like six years old. Just tell me dirty jokes the whole time. Uh, great man. You know, the patriarch of a 10-child family. So, you know, he had to be the leader of a lot of people. Uh, it sucks, you know, he's gone. But, you know, he's back with my grandmother, so... Uh, you know, it's like uh, that's one of those where it's like that's hard to that like uh, my, when my grandmother passed away uh, in like, like March. Uh, it was it was like my my grandfather had had passed away a few years before that, and it was just like it kills you. You know, like you hate that. And she just slowly started like it, it's it's weird. I mean, you, it's not you, weird. It you makes see sense. The slow slide when you see like their their, their partner go. And then, like, they start to kind of decline after that. And it's like, you just realize, like, love is a real thing that, like, keeps people. Like, yeah. I'm not trying to get, like, all, like, like you know, like, inspiration or anything. But, like, like love really does, like, do a yeah. lot for, like, life a lot of times. Like, the person you love passes away. And then there, you just see, like, at older ages, like, there's people that sometimes just, like, wow, like, that was kind of what was keeping yeah. that person going, you know? Well, like, luckily for him, he was still in good enough shape to where he was – for the first, I'd say maybe year and a half after she went, he was still able to be very independent. You know, he uh, he drove into Canada like two or three times by himself just to go on a trip. He was fine. very good. And then over the last year and a half, you know, he's in his late 80s. So, you know, the health just started to decline. Um, but, you know, he was always his own man. He was able to go off and do his own thing. He had a fucking great run. Couldn't have asked for much of a better life. Yeah. So he was a veteran of World War II. Great thank man. You, thank him for his service. But you know, like I said, it, it, I haven't shed any tears over it just because, you know, I don't think I don't think he would have wanted to go much longer the way he was going. He had a great run. He had a lot of people that loved him. He's somewhere right now looking down on you, shaking his head. Oh, I guarantee podcast. you, wherever he is, just he's, SMHing at he, this he, podcast. He, he's drinking whiskey and telling somebody a dirty joke right now. Then maybe he would have loved this podcast then. He actually probably would have. He might have. He would have laughed. I hope so. He would have shaken his head at some of my shit. I, can, I hope so. <laughs> but he would have fucking laughed. He all, we always had the same sense of humor growing up. Let's move along. Um, uh, my final not cool is, and I, I kind of wanted to save this one for last, is uh, this is like one of the OG, like original past the gravy not cools when we first. And I'm 100% on board with it. we first started it. And. Um, Fuck gender reveal parties, all right? Yep. Like, I know some of the listeners may have had yep. gender reveal parties, but I fucking hate them. That gender reveal I've parties been to one. are not cool. I don't go. I have had family members that have had gender reveal parties, and I have just straight up said, I am not going. I've gotten it. I am not going. I, I, I don't uh, give a fuck. Back in the I day. I drank gin through the d- entire thing. Gin. Okay. I get that. No, no, no. It's just my buddy had a bottle of gin, no, so we were literally gender just reveal hand, party. No, he just happened to have a bottle. He of gin. pulled. It was. A, it was. You didn't know what kind of gin it was. He revealed it through like nope, pulling the we cloth just, off of it. We were just taking pulls of gin the whole time. That's an idea, though. And we also, should have a past the gravy gender reveal party, and it's just different types ooh, of gin we can like drink, that. and like they're just under cloth. So we're like, and what are we? Ooh, also, this kind. But also, I'm a very happy drunk on gin, and uh, when it was revealed that it was a daughter. I just tried to hand the bottle of gin to the father. <laughs> he didn't sense. take it because he had to put on the, oh, I'm happy. I'm, I'm super having stoked. A it's not going to be harder to no a girl than a boy. No dad is happy to have a girl the first time. Yeah. I, would, I don't know. As a, a not. Every, I, I mean, we have. Every guy wants a boy first. You and I have been blessed. Our only, 
our only child is the son. So shout out to Skylar. Like, uh, thank you, Boy, thank you, son, yeah. for not making us have so to go I through the that, hassle but, uh, of raising a daughter. Get to the story. But yeah, gender reveal parties not cool. Um, like it's just a big reason. Like, like why do we need to go for you to tell us and like a big weird? Oh look, I hit a golf ball and it blew up. And I mean, I used so it I as opened an a box drink, and it though. turned. Yeah, but still, like I don't care. Like just have us have have us over for like a party, like a baby shower or whatever it is. Do that. Do that. Like, I don't want to come and bring gifts. I'm not going and to, to go do shit like shower. that. Like, I mean, if there's booze there, I don't know. But, like, still, I it, gender reveal parties are stupid. Just go and tell people, like, tell people, like, hey, we're going to have a boy. We're going to have a girl. And right. also, a little, a little, uh, get to the point of this. A little anti 2019 of you to be picking the gender of your child already. Shut up. Why don't you let your child pick its own gender? But why don't you gender reveal parties are not cool because not cool. there were people in Iowa at a gender reveal party, and it was supposed to be like one of those you open the the little like it's a color bomb where yeah. like you hit it and it's like oh well what's it gonna be oh my god which is like they're always the most anticlimactic videos where it's just like uh, uh, the grandma or one of the couple's moms is like in there and it's like all right let's go and they're standing in white and then they open it up and it's like oh my god. And a lot of them are fake reactions and like overreacted on purpose yep. or just acted out reactions. And like, I mean, I'm not saying you're excited or you're not excited. To, you're, you're finding out what the sex of your child is, but still like a lot of them are just overdone and like, they're not original anymore. And somebody was opening one of those little explosive things. They're like, Oh, it explodes. Except it was like, it exploded like a pipe was, bomb and it killed somebody. Yeah, they so, accidentally real cool move. Pipe, Cause they did it at home. They made their own accidentally created a pipe bomb and, uh, killed one of their mothers. I think is what it was. Um, it said a 56 year old relative. So yeah. yeah, not cool. Uh, gender real parties. Let's ban them. We should ban them because, you know, I think that one, if one gender real party is going to do this, like who knows what's next? Nope. Like if this, if gender reveal parties like this were vaping, it'd be shut down so fast. <laughs> like all it needed was like, Oh, one person has a vaping thing. Let, let's shut that down. I and, mean, there, like, have, why don't we shut down there have been parties? vapes that exploded already. Right. But like, why don't we shut down gender reveal parties? I, I'm all aboard that train. No, Fuck gender reveal I'm parties. Not. They I'm are not. not cool. Gender reveal parties are not cool. Hey, you want to have a stupid party? That is your choice of freedom. I'm going to make fun of you the whole time. Oh, I'll make fun of you. I don't want to ban it. I'm going to make fun of you the whole time. I don't want to ban There are, are very stupid. few things I want to ban. Because as free Americans, we have the choice to do whatever stupid shit we want to do. Well, you know what I definitely don't want to ban is Ugh. Little M Air Why would you? I mean, would you'd you? have to be insane oh, to ban like a Little bacon, M Air Freshener. You want to ban bacon next because it's just as good? Um, Like bacon and then Little M. Like those are the, basically the two greatest things you could argue, honestly. Of all time. Um, the smell cars got you down. Little M Air Fresheners not only smell good, they look good too. They're made from paper, scented with essential oils. Their air fresheners are going to freshen up any space you have at all. They are... They offer a fantastic variety of different scents and unique designs. And uh, right now, if you order five or more air fresheners, you're going to get free shipping. And they're all, they used to be $250. Now they are just $2 a piece. So you spend $10, you get free shipping, and you get the best air fresheners in the world. My girl Tessa was saying she put the out of this world one in her car, and she loves it. Pat just said he put one in his car. I love the out of this world design and the rad design, the Miami Beach. And uh, Fresh to Death are my favorite one. Those are my favorite scents that you can get. They have uh, a Smell You Later one, a Be Cool design, a Sniff and Tell design, and a Party On design. Go check it out at littlemshop.com. That's littleemshop.com. Really, they are the best air freshers in the world. And like we always say, like all those bitches with the trees in your car. You have a baby back bitch tree. You tree ass bitch. <clears throat> those trees kill trees. They really kill trees. Little M air fresheners, they plant trees. When you buy an air freshener, we use that to plant trees. And, uh, just why would you want to hurt the environment when you could help the environment by supporting little m air com? go green five or more air freshers you get free shipping on that it's ten dollars yeah who doesn't have ten dollars we got ten dollars everybody's got ten dollars go get you a two dollar air fresher get I you a five two dollar air fresher it's great i promise you you will not be disappointed if you're disappointed i will buy you your next air freshener i promise you because you will not be disappointed. And you'll be like, Alex, I love these air freshers. Little M Tweets. Follow them on Twitter. Go like them on Instagram as well. Little EM Tweets. And go and get your Little M Air Fresheners right now at either Napa Auto Parks up in Conroe and Montgomery or at littleemshop.com. That's littleemshop.com. All right. Let's get to the answers segment. Now, uh, guys, um, I guess I have to do the old, the old spiel. When I was a youngster. I was in Miss Winter's third grade class back in Lawrenceville, Georgia at Far Elementary. And I remember her saying at one point, 
class, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Just stupid people. But she didn't say that part. And I was like, okay. And I remember my hand shut up. I don't quite remember what I asked. But I do remember asking it with like just a shit ton of confidence because she had just said that. And then I got laughed at. And I was like, what? Like, I was, come on, guys. And I was really embarrassed. And I told myself at that time, I was like, one day I'll be in charge and there won't be any such thing as a stupid question. And I didn't even think about the stupid people thing. And there's no such thing as stupid people except for people that have gender reveal parties unless you listen to Pass the Gravy, which cancels it all out. Okay. Um, but I was like, okay, well, wh- I didn't get put in charge. So I started a podcast. and was like, well, I'm going to put myself in charge of that, I guess. And I appointed myself the answers king. And all you got to do, send us your questions. It doesn't have to be. Any, like it can be literally any question in the world. If it's a high thought you have, if you see it on a billboard, you see it on the internet, you want to know what our opinion would be on it. If it's just something you wonder yourself, send it to us, answers at passthegraypod.com if you want to email them. But we do prefer, and we check first, we check Twitter using the hashtag PTG answers at passthegraypod. I'm at Alex J. Middleton. Pat's at not Pat Dan. Robert is at Robert Barbosa03. And uh, you can hashtag PTG answers and we will get to you that way. And uh, we'll get to all of your all of your questions at some point. I promise you we'll get to every single one you send in. So uh, without further ado, here we go. Later, let's you want to play the intro. Well, just answer the question. Why don't you just answer the question? Be honest. No big deal. Yeah, answer. Answer the question. Don't change the subject. Just answer the fucking question. Answers, 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 any questions? Mm. Hi, I'm David Pumpkins, and I'm David motherfucking gonna scare Pumpkins. the hell out of you. How's it hanging? I'm David Pumpkins, <laughs> and I'm gonna scare the hell out of you. So great, so great. All right, let's get to our non-Halloween questions first. And okay. we'll finish up with the Halloween questions. I like that. I like Shout that. out to all you guys for sending in these Halloween-themed questions because these are pretty great ones, if I do say so myself. Our buddy Skylar Lester, <gasps> our son, our podcast son, Skylar Lester. Oh, my God, it's Skylar! At OMG, it's Skylar on Twitter. He says, the flowing body of water that's smaller than a river. Is it pronounced creek or crick? And then he says, hint, it's crick. Uh, it's creek. Here's what... I say Creek. Dawson's I what? Wish. What was that show called? Dawson's Creek. Here's the mm. thing. I, it, it's Crick if you're Southern as hell, which I wish I pronounced it. Crick. No, a Crick is a Crick. You get a Crick in your neck. No. You get no, a Crick in your neck because you sleep on it. You know, That's not a body of water. You know, we're, gonna go, we're going down to the Crick. I wish. Hell, Crick. I wish I was that Southern. I wish I had that accent where it was Crick but not Creek. I pronounce it Creek. I think Crick is so much fucking cooler but like also if you just say like if you sound like me like hey man we're going down to the crick nah it's not you gotta have the accent yeah i mean you you gotta sound like you a good old boy right now you can go down to the crick you know coach orgeron from lsu oh uh, well yeah but go tigers oh yeah go tigers, uh, we're, tigers going right now. we're going to uh, crick and we'll uh, oh, kill him he definitely will kill him down to the crick definitely says crick. alabama don't stand a chance at us on a crick it just if you got the accent and you got that like that fucking awesome southern accent. It's crick. But like, if you sound like us, just regular old bullshit. It's creek. It's creek. It's creek. All right. But it should be crick. No, crick but is it's something just, you get in your neck when you sleep on it. Weird. No. A crick in your neck. A creek is no. a body of water. That sorry, is smaller son. than a river. Sorry, I wish I, I didn't w- mean to let you down. I wish but I we could did. say crick, but it would be disingenuous as shit. Uh, our next question comes from Stephanie Ibawa. So she's in on two of these. Stephanie Ooh. is like second place today or this week. Josh Tree, runaway right now for the Rookie of the Year award. Stephanie Ibawa, I was telling her, probably going to win. Uh, she's front runner at least right now for uh, PTG's Woman of the Year. Or Man of the Year, depending on how progressive we want to be. I mean, she's final three. We got We got some. She's up there. She's up there. We got some competition in that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So Stephanie Baba says, "Does it upset you when things that aren't supposed, or does it upset you when things that are supposed to upset you don't upset you?" No. Because usually it's somebody that's trying to like make me mad, and I love when somebody is trying to make me mad, and I'm just like, I don't care. No, like there's nothing better than that. I don't turning the other cheek. I believe is what it's called. The only things that upset me are my sports teams. And the internet not working, or cable not working, Other or like than, computer like, problems, or no, and, and traffic. 
Traffic too. Is I, get, one I, of I get all of my anger out in traffic. People in the grocery store that are just idiots. That makes me well, mad it, too. Fr- sometimes. It frustrates me, and, I just, and then I'll just push by them. But like I get all my anger out in traffic. Nothing like there's so many things that should bother me that don't because I'm just like I don't care. Whatevs. Yeah. I don't care. You don't pay me enough to care. And if it's something that I'm not getting paid to specifically care right, about, right? I don't fucking care. That works. So no, it does not upset me when things should upset me and they don't. I'm just like, no, because I don't fucking care. Oh, this should upset me? Yeah, it probably should. But I don't fucking care. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Fuck you. <laughs> so yeah, I'm agree with you on that one then. Uh, let's move along to our girl Danielle Weston at Danny underscore Weston. She says, "These are the now these are the Halloween questions." Okay, so should I do the David S. Pumpkins music? Should we play that? Let's do I think it. so. Let's play that. Let's. Uh... There we go. All right. Um, our first Halloween answers question is Daniel Weston at Danny underscore Weston. Like I just said. Do you guys like it better if girls dress slutty, scary, or silly for Halloween? Now, let's go ranking how we like it. I'm going to say... <clears throat> let's see. I don't know. There's not really a wrong way to go. I mean, I, if you're, I'm not a big scary costume guy, but, like, sometimes they do, like, a really good job, and it's like you look like a real skeleton. Like, nobody, like, that's talent. After you get out of, like... College is the last time that really anyone dresses slutty, right? Mm-mm. And even Mm-mm. then, I mean, I'm not gonna go try and hit on the girl in the slutty costume, but like, I'm not, I don't look at. But it. even like, I like, I, I just, I'm, I'm thinking back to like Facebook, like seeing slutty pictures posted afterwards. High school, every all the girls just slutty as shit and they post them. Right. College, the first two years, kind of by the end of college, they weren't. After college, nobody's posting slutty fucking pictures anymore. Um, I would say silly, slutty, scary. Who gives a shit about scary? I'd go silly, slutty, like, scary as well. That's exactly how I was going to Yeah, silly, it. I mean. But scary, sometimes Halloween, like they do like a Halloween, really good job and you're like, I, like props to you. Halloween should be about fun. So I'm going to say silly is the best. Right. Then like, I'm a dude and I have a dick, so slutty is fucking awesome. Like Emma, Emma dressed like as that 80s mom. I thought that was it's silly. It was hilarious. great. It was great. And I loved scary, it. scary, like. How often do people actually dress scary and really pull off scary? It's more of just a, like, you're going to go balls to the fucking wall, and then you're just like, all right, that seems like so much effort. And, I like, effort is just, it's weird to me. I don't, I've never put effort in <laughs> Sometimes it's like, yeah, you tried too hard, I guess. But I'd say, uh, slitty, uh, silly, slutty, scary. Robert, what are your rankings on that? Robert's is slutty, slutty, slutty. He's yeah, all only, about only slutty. slutty. Uh, I'm going silly, scary, slutty. Oh, of course you go okay, slutty. Yeah, because he's respect- you're such a good you know, guy. Look at me, I don't care. I don't. Other than you just show any skin. <laughs> Robert actually knew the tits were gonna come out during game Sh- six. Says the guy that dressed up as Justin Trudeau for Halloween. And, and Robert, Robert, That's like why he's not on camera this week. Ro- Robert was <laughs> Robert was watching game six on a delay, and he he tits came out during the seventh inning, and he shut the game off and just listened on radio. He's like, I don't even want to see that. He did do that. He did do that. We're just kidding. He didn't dress up as blackface Justin Robert, Trudeau. He dressed up as Joe Buck, his favorite broadcaster. Yeah, I did. Yeah. What'd you think? They look like tits. Thoughts? <laughs> uh, yeah, they were there, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they oh by be. the way, by the way, shout out the model Julia Rose who did that. Just found out she went to Texas State. Oh, really? What's up? That's what's up. Clout for my school. That's what's up. Uh, are you more of a boobs or an ass guy, Robert? Um, on who? On women. In general. <laughs> In general? No, on me, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> oh, then on you, boobs all the way. <laughs> I do have nice tits. What about on the ladies? Uh... I don't care either way. You're thinking too hard. It's respect. You're a respect man. You respect women. That's what the answer is. You're not a boobs or an ass man. You're a respect man. We're all respect men here on Pass the Gravy because we respect women. Duh. That's why when you go to PassTheGravyMerch.com, all the ladies' shirts are a dollar off. So look at us being progressive. I can't believe Robert had to think about that. Yeah, Robert. Jeez. Took you a long time to realize you need to respect women. Ask me the same question. Ask me the same question. Pat, are you more of a boobs or ass guy? I'm more of a showing any interest in me guy. Okay, that's there you go. That's a better one. 
<laughs> Robert, you fucking bigot, misogynist. Uh, <laughs> Um, was that is that a Matt Lauer costume you just changed into? <laughs> Jeez, Jeez, dude. All right. Um, <laughs> Todd Voss at as <laughs> underscore scene underscore by underscore TV. Why is the carpet wet, Todd? Why is the carpet wet? Todd says, "Spooky Susan question: If you were a ghost, who slash where would you haunt? Am I haunting for comedy or terror? Both, and or either. Okay, if I'm haunting for terror." Terror. I'm probably just top of my head. The first one popped in my head. I'm gonna haunt Michael Moore because he's a piece of well, shit, and I want his life to be. I miserable. have questions with it, but like to respect the actually, if somebody if somebody fucking killed me, I'm haunting the fuck out of you. I'm haunting the fuck out of you. I mean, I'm probably gonna kill myself with my own fucking habit. Easy answer would be Sam Darnold because he's already seen ghosts. <laughs> Um, Haley Joel Osment uh, would be another good one because I'm haunting, you know, he'd be, well, oh, if, no, 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 see, no, that's a good one. If you're haunting for comedy, Haley Joel Osment, because he's like, God damn it, I knew it, Dude, I, I knew really, this was gonna I happen. I really see dead people now. What? I the knew fuck? this was gonna happen. Um, I'd like to haunt Brett Favre just so I could hang out with him. Mm. Uh, um, I'd like to haunt Dallas Cowboys. Big players, Poppy, the Dallas Cowboys like stadium, just to be a dick. Like, and just, like, you know, get in their heads before games. You know who I'd haunt? Anybody with NFL Sunday ticket. So you could watch the games. So I could still that's keep watching the idea. games. Even after so I'm you're thinking dead. more of, like, what, like, for pleasure for yourself as yeah. opposed to, like, that, trying I mean, to get other people. A, that's who, oh, actually, I mean, they'd have to have Sunday ticket. Uh, it, it'd be somebody from Houston mm-hmm. that is a big Houston sports fan, but also a Packers fan, but has NFL Sunday ticket. That, okay. Like, I'd find specific. a very specific one. So that like, not like I a can Buffalo still Wild watch Wings. all of my Houston sports. Like a Buffalo Wild Wings would be a good one, honestly. No, fuck Buffalo Wild out. Wings. The rings are shit. I would haunt Southern Star because I could just like enjoy beer, maybe. <sighs> mm. I couldn't drink the beer, but maybe if I like you uh by like, osmosis. If I pause pass through the tanks, you could taste just it. Just get a little taste. Beer, I'd still get a buzz. Yeah, that's what I'd do. I'd go to Southern Star. Maybe Connor McGregor, just cause that that seems like it'd be fun. No, I don't. No, no, no. You know who I'd haunt? Paul Rudd. No, I'd fucking haunt that fucking dog face, trash can woman, Nancy motherfucking <laughs> Grace. I would haunt the fuck out of her. I would fucking haunt the fuck so out of her. You want to haunt her for terror? Oh, I'd fucking haunt her. <laughs> I'd haunt that fucking bitch. I would. I would fucking haunt the shit out of her. Ooh. I, I think you've got. A Ouija board down your pants. Well, you're going to need one, Nancy, because I'm going to fucking haunt your bitch ass. Fuck you, Nancy. Did you know she's back now? She has like a TV show on H. Is it HLN? I don't know. She has a show. I saw she was like p- promoting her show. I was like, what are you doing back on TV? I hate you. Get off. And, and like, I wasn't, like, it wasn't like my, I was in uh, somebody else's office and they had, and I was like, why is she here? What? Could you? What? Like, she throws, every time I see her, I'm like, no, no. Fuck Nancy Grace. Could, She's a fucking terrible fucking human being. Fuck that bitch. Fuck her. Could you hunt da- haunt David S. Pumpkins? I don't think so. Nah, dude. Nobody can hunt David S. Pumpkins. He's, he's already, too good. He's, he's too already good. in the ethereal he's too realm. Good. Nah, he, you can't. You um, can't. He is running. Uh, except I'd be floating, bitch. And I would that, float yeah, right I, to you. And I'd be like, ooh, Nancy, you dumb bitch. The Duke Lacrosse team didn't really rape anybody, did they? Ooh. You know what pisses me off? I think I'd have to haunt my brother. And, yeah, yeah. But, but he'd talk to me so much, I wouldn't want that. Well, then you'd haunt. I him would until just want to watch all the sports. You could haunt him until like he was like afraid, so he'd like kind of leave you alone, you know? No, but if he was afraid, he'd run and not put on the sports I want to watch. Oh no, you wait until he turns him on, then you haunt him, so he leaves you. He doesn't talk. Duh. Terry Bradshaw, I think, would be a lot of fun. Or, as Billy Eilish would say, duh. Duh. There we go. No, I think you know. I, I actually a good. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna go with Terry Bradshaw because he's gonna watch all the games. Now, Pat, this is gonna be great. And tell me, Terry Bradshaw would not be phased at all by having a ghost around him. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, come in. Look at this ghost. Look at this ghost. Terry Bradshaw would just be like, dude. What Michael, took you so Michael, long to show stay up? Yeah. Howie, get yeah. out over here. Yeah. There's a ghost, and he's been hanging out watching football. How cool is this? That's How it. cool I'm, is this? I'm 100% going with Terry Bradshaw. He'd like talk about you on the NFL like the Sunday, Sunday fun, morning. Yeah. He's the most fun person on the fucking planet. And then Rob we're, gonna, we're going down to Cachata. Rob Riggle would have skits about how Terry Bradshaw's talking to fucking he's ghosts. About it. Ooh, it tie in nicely ghosts? to the Sam Darnold I thing. Said goats. Ghosts. Ghosts. 
the host. Yeah, dude, Terry Bradshaw. He's from Louisiana. Duh. Somebody in his family already knows how to speak to spirits. But you could go to the casino with, like, you travel a lot. Like, yeah, that'd be tight. Hundred percent, Terry Bradshaw. Terry Bradshaw. Final answer. Robert, would you say? Did he say anything? No. I don't think Robert said he. Who would you haunt, or where would you haunt? Uh, well, I'm surprised you didn't say you would haunt Emma because you love her and stuff. I, mean, I love I, Emma, but like, I, I feel like Emma Sam would be scared if I was haunting her. You know, haunting has Haunt a negative not connotation. Great. Then why That's, is there a silly one? Why is there a be, silly one and a terrible? Well, because like part of it is like you're haunting it, but like you're like. Well, no, 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 Haunting, Whoa. haunting for Whoa. terror because you know you're scared of them, that all. and then haunting. Do do this? No, haunting Let's for just... comedy because it would be funny to yourself. But I finally said it on Terry Bradshaw. I advise you, sir, do no. not tangle with me. <laughs> I said it on Terry Bradshaw because there's no way Terry Bradshaw is scared by ghosts. A ghost? I love ghosts. So, uh, Jimmy, I see ghosts all the time in my ranch at Louisiana. I hate that. Gushada is haunted. There's ghosts everywhere. I love it. I, I love the I ghosts. Said, Casper the friendly I ghost. I said for terror or for comedy so you could scare them or you could have fun. That was the terror versus comedy thing, Bobby Jokes. But Terry Bradshaw. It, it, what if like, you just had to drop a couple be, of booze a day? Like, ooh. The only reason I take Terry Bradshaw instead of uh, 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 fucking what's his name? Walton from the NBA. Bill Walton. Bill Walton. Bill Walton 100% already speaks to ghosts. But you wouldn't know what he was – yeah, you wouldn't understand but, what he was saying not, at the but time. But I'm not as big of an NBA fan. That's why I go Terry because I like the NFL. Book. Okay, understandable. Because they're the same people from different sports. Understandable. I would just haunt the fuck out of Nancy Grace. That's why. Like, hold on. Whenever we, she's asking for, stat, for stats, I'd be like, uh, Nancy, let me play you a terror, bit. For terror, I'm doing it for companionship because I love him. Robert, who would you haunt? Sam for companionship. Yeah, Sam for companionship. Oh, so you're just going to scare her? Take the easy way out. I mean, what if she's terrified of ghosts? I don't think she believes in ghosts. So then yeah. she's not even going to believe you're real. No, uh, no. She seems very pragmatic. So she'd just be like, oh, Bobby, you're back. Cool. Do the dishwasher. But Nancy would just be, <laughs> Nancy, I'd be like, Nancy, what are the stats? No, no. What, I, are, what are the stats? The I, athletic stats? And she'd be like, I don't mean <laughs> the athletic stats. I mean the rape stats. Ooh, fuck I, you, bitch. I 100% respect that. Yeah. Fuck you, Nancy. Fuck you, Nancy. Fuck you. No, you're BS. I feel like after a No, you're BS. I'd love to. No, you're BS. I'd love to haunt her too. But like all of us, like, and don't, don't get me wrong. I'd feel very fulfilled haunting her for eternity. And I mean, do you life. have children? I don't. And that's why it doesn't matter. Cause I'd have all day to haunt you. But I'd rather hang out with my boy Terry. Yeah. I would just, but uh, I, but, I would but, be so but mean. But I respect the shit. I would be so mean. I respect the shit. I'd out be of so mean to Nancy. You'd, you'd Beetlejuice the shit out of oh, me. Oh, fuck yeah, I would. Fuck Nancy Grace. Yeah. That's a good question. That's a really good question, Todd. That's a really good question. Todd Voss, you know what? I like Todd Voss. That might be question, that's, that, that's, that's, that might be question of the month. You know, in the great, when the gravies come around, best answers question asker, like our boy Skylar Lester, like our son. Which, I, is it a little bit of nepotism if we give it to him again? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. But, like, I would say Skyler's right there. And then, like, right now, though, like, Todd Voss questions like that. That's how you win a Gravies Award at the end of the year. So, fellas, ladies, Zyes, Zs, whatever, keep it up. Keep it up. Todd Voss, hell of a question right there. Uh, our buddy Luke Soin emails in and says, better costume idea. And he gives us some choices. <laughs> I remember laughing at this one. I read it. Uh, better costume idea. A member of the sane clown posse, a wet dream catcher, or a flat earth global task force representative. So I'm just going to go ahead and say right away what I think of these. Uh, <laughs> wet dream catcher, no. I don't want to catch other people's cum. Uh, no, but like I just imagine you dressing up like a dream catcher and it's just got like like whipped cream on it. Like That would be a funny looking costume. I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> I, I, I can't picture – a flat it's just a earth facial. global task force representative. But when I picture a member of the same clown posse, I picture the makeup, but with Mormon clothes. And that's fucking hilarious to me. So I'm going to go with that. Yeah, I was going to go same clown posse too. Just but like I picture like it's kind of like somebody that looks like like they're wearing like a business suit. Like, you know, like, but they have like the mask on. It's like the Joker face or like the total insane clown posse face. Yeah. But like, so got, you picture a business suit. They've got some like okay. nice glasses on. They're maybe, yeah. maybe they're dressed in like Sperry's or whatever. Yeah. Like they're, they're an accountant. Just, like something as, like that. As soon as they I make heard great it, decisions. As soon as I heard it, I pictured a Mormon with the makeup. And that's fucking hilarious to me. So that's where I'm going. What about you, B Jokes? 
Same clown posse. Yeah, that's just too good to pass. I just, I, I can't even picture what a flat Earth global task force represents. We should would start like. the sane clown posse. Like, I feel like a lot. Maybe like insane clown posse has done a number on like the clown movement, like that and the Joker probably have really heard it. But like, I would say like then. Like we're the same. We're the same clown posse. Like, oh well, these guys make sense. They I can't remember their names though. But like, just walking up to the door. Do you have time to speak about know, our like Lord and Savior? You're a juggalo, right? If you're in the it, insane clown posse. Or if you're a fan, right? Yeah, you're a juggalo. Yeah, so yeah. same clown posse, Luke. That's a really good question. Definitely same clown posse. By the way, that's one of the greatest ideas for a Halloween costume of all time. Yeah. Like if I was going to a party this weekend, a hundred percent right now, that's what I was. That's what I'd be doing. In fact. I, I, I want to find well, one. You'd have now. to be in a posse, though. So you'd have to have a couple no, boys. You no, and the boys. No. You put the makeup on and you put on a white dress shirt and khaki pants. So you look like a Mormon. You you, you got the face paint. You're the clown posse, but you're sane. I don't know, but like Pat just seems like a kind of guy that would wear like a Jason hockey mask, would be like his go to. I can see you doing that. I don't know. I can't really see myself wearing that. Yeah, you're right. Maybe I'm off. I don't know. It's just, just I was spit on. It, it, it seems I like on. it seems like it'd be very sweaty on my forehead. Yeah, probably would be. Probably would be. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, moving on, our final question, and this is why he's the MVP of the podcast right now. The this episode at least, Josh Tree Coddle at Joshua Tree seven one three. He's he's hit the trifecta, and all three of our listeners submit your whatever segments. He has submitted stuff for he's that hit that the made it on the show. Menage a trois. Uh, Josh Tree says at Joshua Tree seven one three says who wins in a cage match between a werewolf, mummy, vampire, and ghost? Can we all agree the mummy's out? Yeah, he's already dead. But I mean, just like mummies don't move quick. There, you could just okay. First of all, here's the way I think about it. a werewolf would just destroy a mummy. He's got claws. Oh yeah, he would yeah, take easily, out all the shit. He's easily. done. Uh, a fight between a werewolf and a vampire could be very good because they're both unusually strong. Now who's watched Twilight here? Have we watched any of us watch Twilight? Nope. No, Robert. I doubt you've watched Twilight. I've seen Twilight. Of course, Robert. Of course, Twilight movies. of course. Okay, so I'm I know they so, have no, both. Stop! I'm so angry that you've seen Twilight, but not so many movies that we've brought up to. Well, you. Well, of course, like that would be the one he did see. Oh um, my god! So those just, are vampire movies. Just the okay, but they have movies. werewolves in it, right? Yeah. Are the werewolves the bad guys? Uh, no, they're just other. Like do vampires kick werewolves' asses no, or backwards? I do know yes. that I do know that there are good vampires and bad vampires, and then the werewolves and vampires unite against bad vampires. I think. Yeah. Okay, so I would think a werewolf would fuck up a vampire. I, wanna, I mean, he's a fucking werewolf, yo. But, but like you, they're in werewolf form, but, but, right? But, but, not just but, like but, regular. But, not but vampires form. are until you kill them, they are eternal, and they've got you ridiculous have, like, silver. strength. Have, to have silver. But here's the thing: Fuck. vampires, if they did kill the werewolf, would he have had like think, a silver think, tooth? Think of the power that werewolves get from mortal humans. If they killed a, a werewolf, bro, oh, that's not oh bro, or, or have you seen Underworld? Would uh, would they be a lichen? Half vampire, half werewolf? Those things are strong. Yeah, as no, shit. we gotta respect the exercise here. Respect the exercise. Yeah, and he, but here's the thing: and I went through all this mental exercise in my I mean, head. I'm doing jumping those, jacks right but now. But then I got to the ghost. But the ghost, like, you can't get it. You can't get the ghost, so the ghost wins. But, like, the ghost doesn't fuck anybody up. The ghost just outlast. It's it's like survivor, oh, no, outwit, no. outlast, outplay. No, ghost could definitely do damage to you. You just can't get a hold of them. It's mental damage. Oh, what it, it uh, the, the ghost would possess one of the one of the uh, uh, so Okay, the, so it's ghost. The ghost, ghost wins. Ghost. ghost can push you and shit. You just can't hit them. All right, so it's a ghost. That's unanimous. It's, it's, it's 100% You know, ghost. it took us a while to get there, guys, but I thought that was the, the well, beauty just, of teamwork. I wanted to walk everyone through the mental exercises that I had to do about all the fight until finally you read the last answer and it's ghost. And you're like, well, you can't find right. ghost. Hashtag PTG cage match. I love it when you guys give us the cage match options. These are, like, these are one of my favorite. I are, fucking love the cage the, match. Ladle questions. Uh, like, like Ladle questions, boomerang questions, and cage Twitter match poll? questions are my favorite. Or my favorite kinds, but uh, send us like hashtag PTG cage match. I think we should. Who wins bowling. in this fight? Who wins in this fight? Werewolf, mommy, vampire, or ghost? I think you can do four, right? Yeah, I think it's Twitter poll. Okay, so I'll, we'll post. We'll post that. Um, remind me to do that. You, you have access now, don't you? I'm gonna try. I don't okay. know if I, know I think you I'm have doing. access. Uh, okay, we'll post this like I guess tonight. But let us know hashtag PTG cage match what you guys think and why. And uh, on our poll, I guess just respond to that instead. Then um, that's it. That's it. You guys have a happy Halloween. That y'all y'all have anything? Happy and safe, guys. Happy and safe. Um, hey, be chill. Uber, Lyft, 
I know. Don't drink and drive. Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. I've been there. I've done it. Don't fucking do it. It's stupid. Have a fucking great time. great But have a safe time. A very spooky time. And then also, make sure every time you see somebody, you say, How's it hanging? The, the, just just lead with that, and they'll be like, oh, okay, okay. I'll, and I hope that people scare the hell out of you. You guys have a great Halloween, great rest of your week. I uh, can't wait to talk. I'm like, I, I love this podcast, right? Like, I've not always loved it, but, like, we're in a really good spot right now, guys. I love the listeners. I love the interaction we're mm. getting. I love the people that, that are commenting and posting shit and sharing shit. I love, like, Ryan Gonzalez sharing the little fun facts about The Office that I totally forgot about and, and the little deleted scenes and stuff like that. Like, you guys are the best. The Gravy Gang is the best gang in the world. We love the fuck out of you guys. At Pastor Gray Pod, I'm at Alex J. Middleton. Pat's at not Pat Dan. Robert is at Robert Barbosa 3 Have a great Halloween and a great rest of your week. Until we talk to you motherfuckers next week, pass the gravy, you motherfucking bitches!